Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea in the field of electronics engineering or electrical engineering and make it more tangible and easy to understand. This video aims to look at what capacitors are and what make them up, how a capacitor works, units of capacitance and types of capacitors. But before we dive into these concepts, if you'd like to support this channel, consider subscribing to the channel or supporting us through Patreon, which you can find in the description below. I'd also like to clarify that this video assumes that the viewer is familiar with nodes, meshes, loops, and branches. And if you're not, you can check out my video on the topic. So what are capacitors? A capacitor is a two-terminal electronic or electrical component. And alongside resistors and inductors, they are one of the most fundamental passive components that we will use. So you will find them practically everywhere. A capacitor is a two-terminal device that stores electrical energy. There are two common ways you will see a capacitor in a circuit schematic or you'll draw a capacitor. The first capacitor that you're seeing is of a symbol of a capacitor that is not polarized, meaning that there is no polarity on either side of the capacitor. There is no positive terminal or negative terminal. As for the second symbol, the one with the curved line, the second photo, it indicates that the capacitor is polarized. And polarized capacitors probably mean that they are an electrolytic capacitor. And we will talk about that more later when we talk about the different types of capacitors. Each capacitor in the circuit schematic is accompanied by a symbol that indicates its name, such as C1 and a number that indicates a value. And that value is the value of the capacitance of the capacitor, or how many farads it has. But what is farads and what is the unit for capacitance? Each capacitor is built to have a specific amount of capacitance. And the capacitance of a capacitor is how much charge you can store in a capacitor. More capacitance more, means more capacity to store charge. And the, st and the standard unit of capacitance is called farads, which is abbreviated by the letter F. One farad is a lot of capacitance. So you will usually find capacitors in the pico, which is 10 to the negative 12 farads, to the microfarads, range which is 10 to the power negative 6. A capacitor is created out of two metal plates and an insulating material called a dielectric. The metal plates are placed very close to each other and in parallel but the dielectric sits between them to make sure that they don't touch. Dielectric material is a material that is an insulating material. It can be anything from paper, glass, rubber, ceramic, plastic, or anything that will hinder the flow of current. Now, how does a capacitor work? It's important to note that I won't be going into the specifics of capacitor theory. I just would like to give a brief overview on it so that we can just take a look at a, a capacitor in, in action in the work lab, just to get familiar with how it can store energy. When a current flows through a circuit or into a capacitor, the charges accumulate on either sides of the plates because they cannot pass through the insulating dielectric. Electrons, or the negatively charged particles, are stuck on one side of the plate or accumulate on one side of the plate. And it became it becomes this plate becomes an overall negatively charged plate. And this negatively charged plate will repel or push away like charges, which are electrons, making the other plate more positively charged. And the positive and negative charges on either side of the plates attract each other because opposites attract. But with the dielectric sitting between them, as much as they'd like to come together, 
the charges cannot move. And so these stationary charges on either side of the plates create an electric field. When, when, the, when the positive and negative charges accumulate on either side of the capacitor plates, they become charged. So the capacitor becomes charged. And this is where the capacitance comes in, because this is where, where, where the capacitance tells you the maximum amount of charge that the capacitance can store. If a path in the circuit is created for the, chip, the capacitor to discharge, then the charges will find another path to leave the capacitor and discharge. Now that we've gained a, a, a little bit of an idea of how capacitors work, or capacitors work, let's take a look at the different types of capacitors that vary on size, maximum voltage, tolerance, capacitance, etc. The two most common capacitors out there are the ceramic capacitors and electrolytic capacitors. Electrolytics are great because they can pack a lot of capacitance into a relatively small volume, whereas ceramics are more a near ideal capacitor, but their small capacitance can be limiting. And ceramic capacitors are the least expensive option too, and are very well suited for high frequency coupling and decoupling application. Of course, there are other types of capacitors out there, but I won't be tackling them in this video. So let's jump over to the workbench and we will be taking a look at a circuit that is similar to the one that's displayed over here. And the main purpose of looking at the circuit in real life is just to demonstrate the capacitor's ability to charge and act as a battery to light up an LED. So first, we will take a look at the charging circuit where we will be charging the capacitor. Then we will toggle the switch to discharge the capacitor's voltage through an LED. So you will see that the capacitor will act as a battery for the LED and as it discharges, the LED will dim. But since I don't have a two terminal switch, I will be using a push button and a push button is a switch with maybe <clears throat> the one that you have has four terminals and the one that I will be using certainly has four, uh, let's say terminals. And the two terminals on top are internally connected. So you can think of them as a node and the two on, on the bottom are internally connected. So you can think of them as a node. And, what, and we can connect these two nodes by pressing the switch to create a connection between either ends. So now that we've obtained a little bit of a brief overview on how capacitors work, let's take a look at how the capacitor can act as a small battery to charge an LED. So as you can see, I've hooked up the circuit as the circuit diagram and rather than using a two uh, terminal switch I'm using a push button. The push button is connected to a uh, let's say a node or a interconnected a node of the push button here so that when we uh, plug in the battery push on push on to the push button we will be charging the capacitor. As we let go and as we let go, we basically cut off the power supply from the uh, capacitor. So it's only the capacitor working and it will find a path to discharge through the LED. So what we expect is the LED will start off ha having, let's say, a, a light of full brightness and then slowly dims as the capacitor discharges. Now. Now that we've have had a look at the circuit, let's just talk about let's talk about the capacitor. So we have the 470 uh, microfarads capacitor. Okay, and as you can see, we have one end of the capacitor uh, denoted as negative through this uh, denotation, and you can 
uh, because this is an electrolytic capacitor, it, uh, you will find that it's polarized. And the way you can easily identify the positive and uh, negative terminals is through uh, either looking at looking for this negative over here or uh, through uh, identifying the positive terminal of the capacitor by looking at the longer end of the wires or the terminals of the capacitor. So we'll hook up the capacitor in such a manner where the positive uh, end of it will be connected to the uh, power supply when we close or press down onto the push button and the negative to the ground. So I went ahead and removed the LED for now and I'm going to go ahead and press the push button to charge the capacitor and I think that would be about it. And when I take the two leads of the multimeter and try measuring the voltage across the capacitor, I should get about nine volts since the battery Those that I'm using is about nine volts. The capacitor volts. is fully charged. And now, by plugging in the LED, We can see that, and by plugging, unplugging the power supply, we can see that the capacitor acts as a small battery for the LED. And if we observe the charge across the capacitor, we can see that it has discharged through the LED. So in comparison to what the LED looked like when, it, when we first connected it, it was very bright, and we can see that it slowly dims as the capacitor discharges through the other path that we've created for it. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful consider subscribing to my channel or if you'd like to support me you can do so through Patreon which you can find in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video and as always thank you for watching.